So we've uh, started on uh, first uh, first Thessalonians, and um, last class we looked at um, um, Acts chapter seventeen. In Acts chapter seventeen, where we saw how Paul and uh, the team goes to um, Thessalonica, uh, which is like the capital city of the Macedonian region, and they spend. Uh, so the scripture says that as was custom, he goes to the synagogue and uh, he reasoned with them like discussed reasoned um and explaining and demonstrating i think that's what we see uh, in acts chapter 17 and verse 3 say that he was explaining and demonstrating that about christ how christ had to suffer and how he had to rise again from the dead and uh, this jesus is whom i preach is the messiah so that was his objective that like people needed to know that and uh, he he went went ahead and did that now it says that uh, like uh, some of them were persuaded right so he's talking about the jews some of them were persuaded um they which means that they they had they were favorable to listen to him and that they were they wanted to believe uh, in this messiah um verse 4 and then a great multitude of devout greeks now these were people who were, uh, you know, who were not fully, uh, like, were not circumcised, and they were Gentiles, the non-Jew people, uh, but they were devout in the sense they were, you know, following the uh, Jewish religion, right? They were devout. Um, they were following the traditions, maybe the customs, and so on. So, um, it says um, a great multitude of the devout Greeks. Now they were also. Uh, uh, and then it also says, and, uh, and not a few of the leading women. So, uh, so probably these were people who were, uh, you know, um, who were leaders uh, or who were uh, wives of leaders or prominent people, right? Um, and these also joined Paul and Silas. So they, they, uh, you know, joined with them. They wanted to know more. They wanted to hear more. So the Jews who were not persuaded, they became envious. And then, you know, we, we saw how um, they persecuted and so that they had to leave from there, right? So that's, so that is uh, in effect, you know, that's how the, the church in Thessalonica was birthed, right? To the, through the efforts, directly through the efforts of uh, uh, Paul and the team. So they shared uh, the gospel there and then that's how the church was birthed. Okay, so um, quite exciting to see that uh, so many, you know, came to uh, their faith in Jesus and so many wanted to follow the Lord Jesus. So Paul spends time uh, teaching them, uh, etc. And But he had to leave, right? Um, it says uh, they came there, they came to Berea also and they stirred up the crowds and then immediately the brethren sent paul away so uh, and then paul silas and timothy uh, were remained in berea so that is what we see there and then paul paul of course goes to athens and then he goes to corinth and so on so that's what we uh, read okay so so let's look at um, um, um you know thessalonians first thessalonians let's turn there um second okay so this has uh, five chapters okay so um so it's paul and uh, silas and timothy who are there and they write this book okay so um we, we see that there was persecution. So the Thessalonians also were perse facing persecution by the, um, by, by the Jews and by others. And uh, we see that, Paul mentions that in uh, chapter 2. And also, um, there was also a question, you know, about the resurrection. Right? So Paul addresses that also in the epistle. There was a question about the resurrection, you know, uh, what would happen to those uh, who had died before uh, before this, before the cross, and so on, right? So Paul addresses about that in uh, chapter four. Um, uh, um, sorry, not before the cross. He's, he's talking about um, you know what would happen 
um, when Christ would come again, and or, or there were probably there were uh, doubts and questions about that. So Paul addresses that, you know, in One Thessalonians four, and then um, uh, about uh, they seem to be having some doubts about the time of Christ's return, right? So that also he addresses in chapter five, right? Uh, like he says that the day of the Lord comes as a as a thief in the night. Right? When, when everybody is not aware of, when everybody is, um, uh, you know, they are, uh, they're totally not expecting. You know, that's that's how uh, it happens. So, but the, the surety of it, surety of the Lord's return, everything he mentions. So, this um, the scholars say that this was probably written in 49, AD 49, uh, and AD 51, and uh, from Corinth. Right, because uh, Acts chapter 18 um, uh, gives information about that. So probably uh, from Corinth, um, he, he wrote the uh, letter to uh, Thessalonians. Okay. Um, so let's uh, get into chapter 1. Okay. Um, so we see that uh, about the city itself, that it's a... Um, it's, uh, you know, it's a, a cap it was a capital city of the Macedonian uh, uh, province, and uh, seems to be a prominent city, uh, like all um, you know, all those uh, uh, cities in that region. Um, it was uh, it had different beliefs, various beliefs, uh, with, with regard to moral standards. Also, the, they had uh, you know the, the standard of morality was quite low, so therefore. You know, Paul had to write and, and about that in 1 Thessalonians 4. So from that, we understand that the moral standards of the city or of the culture uh, of the city uh, was also like somehow getting into the church. So he had to uh, you know, write to them, warn them, and, uh, and point to them about the, uh, about the moral standards, moral purity um, they had to uh, adhere to. Okay, so he writes about that in chapter four. Okay, so let's um, move to uh, chapter one. So it starts by, Paul starts by saying, Paul, uh, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, um, you know, it, the, the name Silvanus is a Latin form of Silas. So it, it is, uh, you know, Silas is Greek. So this is a Latin form of Silas, which means Silvanus. So um, um, so he's saying Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. So Tim, uh, Silas and Timothy were also with him at the time of writing, and they were in Corinth when they wrote this, right? So, um, so that's, that's uh, the, these three were there when Paul write. But, uh, sorry, um, uh, Silvanus and Timothy were there when Paul wrote this letter. Okay, so, um, okay, let me just uh, share the notes also. Okay. okay I'll, I'll upload the notes at the end of uh, today's session. Right. So it says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, this is his customary greeting. Okay, let's read from verse 3 onwards. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other, so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. These shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified, 
in his saints and to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of his of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, So he starts by this customary greeting of saying, you know, grace to you and peace from God our Father. And then he goes on to thank God. He says, we always thank God for you. Um, for your faith grows exceedingly. So this was a church which was growing spiritually, which uh, whose faith and testimony was, um, and the love for one another. It was, uh, you know, it was, uh, everybody was talking about it, right? Um, so, and so he says that we also boast about you. You know, we hear of your, uh, of, the, of the kind of lives that you live, um, that your, uh, the, your faith grows and your love for each, each other, now that is also abounding and so we boast about you among all the churches and this is something that they boast about the patience and faith with which they face the tribulations that they endure okay so this church was facing tribulations this church was facing persecutions but uh, they they face these tribulations and persecutions with patience and faith so that's something for us to learn as well uh, that we can apply as well that here was an example set a persecuted church a church that was going through tribulations but facing it with pace, patience and faith right and uh, in in verse 5 paul goes on to say um sorry yeah in verse 5 um uh, he says which is the manifest evidence you know the fact that you um the face um, sorry, one second, just a moment. Oh. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I just, I think I went to, uh, uh, man, I just went to another verse. Okay, so we, uh, let's, let's do verse two again, so sorry. Uh, we give thanks to you, thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing, okay? Um, your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope uh, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, um, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. I'm so sorry, I was reading from Second Thessalonians, uh, that verse about uh, tribulations. Um, yeah. So, um, so he says, uh, we give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Um, what, what is he remembering? without ceasing, um, the work of faith, labor of love, patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God, the Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. Okay. Um, it says, uh, you know, knowing that you were appointed to this, knowing that you were appointed, uh, um, you know, you had received salvation. Um, and so this is something that we uh, make mention of you in our prayers. Uh, and this is what we remember, you know, your work uh, of faith, your labor of love. So faith, love, and hope was something, these were characteristics that were found in the church of Thessalonica, right? In the believers in Thessalonica. Um, so verse 5, uh, you know, just like how we read in First Corinthians. Right? So he, he, again, this is something that he's sharing saying, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. Okay, um, So that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. And from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God had gone out so that we do not need to say anything, for they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you and 
and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Okay, so this is what he gives thanks God, thanks to the Lord for, for the people. And uh, he remembers them for their faith, for their love, for their patience and hope in the Lord Jesus. Um, and he, verse 5, he, he mentions that the gospel that they shared did not come in word only. Right? It was not something that came as a matter of words or a communication of just words, but it came in power and in the Holy Spirit. Right? So um, it was with a demonstration. Right? Power is demonstrated, right? either uh, physically, emotionally, um, and resulting in transformation, changed lives. Um, so saying the gospel came in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. Right? Um, and um, as you know, what kind of men we were among you for your sake. So he's saying, you know, this, this gospel that was preached, it, it came with all this. It came with power. It came with uh, the, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit and with much assurance and for you know what kind of men or what kind of people we were among you okay so uh, in other words he was saying you know our lives right the uh, the, the, li the kind of life that we led, led the kind of life that you you saw that we were leading uh, it is something that that accompanied the gospel okay so there it so which means that it was not a life that was contradictory like they were not saying one thing, living something else. Right? Their, their life and the truth that they were proclaiming were one and the same. And the truth that they proclaimed was accompanied with much power. And there was demonstration of power. And it was accompanied with the Holy Spirit and, and much assurance. Okay. So then it says that uh, in... Um, you know, very interesting to note that uh, verse 6, and you became followers of us and of the Lord. Okay, so they they followed their examples. Okay, the scripture talks about, uh, you know, in Hebrews, we, we see that, uh, you know, you, you, um, uh, you, you see, you, I mean, you follow those who have, uh, the, those who have been appointed over you, considering the outcome of their faith, you know, considering how they live their lives. So we see that, right? Um, um, in Hebrews 13 and verse 7, where the writer of Hebrews says, Remember those who rule over you, who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Okay, so he's saying, um, you know, you follow the faith of these people who are appointed over you, but you consider the outcome of their conduct, meaning you consider their life, consider their behavior. What is the output of their lifestyle? Okay, you consider that. Um, so here, he's saying, this is how you became followers of us. You followed us and you followed, uh, followed us and the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. You know, so there was persecution, there was trouble, there was a lot of tribulation, but you received it in much affliction. Okay. Even though there was affliction, you received it with joy of the Holy Spirit. So because they received the word, and despite the circumstances, they, there was um, internally they had the joy of the Holy Spirit. They experienced the joy of the Holy Spirit. So this is how it was. It wasn't like the whole situation was, uh, you know, just perfect. And so they received the gospel. No, there was a lot of trouble, uh, danger to their lives. And in much affliction, they received the word, which the the, the word of the gospel. Right? It says, uh, and um, they became examples to, to their entire region. Their life was so radically changed, so radically transformed. And their testimony was, was something which, which spread. You know, they became examples to all that entire region, to all the believers there in the region. And it says in verse 8, for from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth. You know, they were 
professing believers. Um, they were bold, courageous, and professing believers. So they they went about through their lives, and also, um, you know, they intentionally obviously shared the gospel so paul declares and for from you the word of the lord has sounded forth not only in macedonia and achaia but also in every place your faith toward god has gone out so that we don't need to say anything. like their faith in god uh, obviously the first and foremost thing was how they handled the persecution how they handled their afflictions and uh, in the joy of the holy spirit Right. They had that calm assurance and uh, they obviously had their lives. They demonstrated the joy that they were internally experiencing. So um, so all that. So he's saying we don't need to say anything. Your life itself is speaking. Okay, So a very important thing right? Um, uh, that when our life speaks, um, when our life, uh, the life that we live, it's a very powerful, um, it's a very powerful message that goes out. Right, the life that we live. Um, so Paul is mentioning that. And in verse 9, he says, For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So this life, changed life, this transformed life that they were living, where one, of course, it was talking about the kind of faith they had, the kind of uh, joy they were having, in despite all the troubles, but they were also, you know, communicating something else. It was also pointing to the kind of uh, ministry that Paul and his team had among them. So he says, you know, they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. So they had other substitutes uh, apart from the true and living God. So he says that uh, you know you turned, you you you, know, you turned, you heard the gospel, you turned, and you changed, and uh, you put your faith, and no more substitutes, right? No, you did not put your faith in the idols. You discontinued, and you put your faith in the, and to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Okay, so, so this is the whole thing, like, just like how Paul and the team lived their lives, and how, you know, we read about Paul, uh, how he was uh, expectant of the Lord's return, right? Um, he was a citizen of heaven, like all the other believers, and he was expectant of the Lord's return. Right? So, so he's saying that uh, to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Okay. So we look at um, chapter 2. We, we see um, um, you know, Paul talking some more about their ministry, right? how they came and ministered. Okay, let's read uh, from verse 1. For you yourselves know, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain. But even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated in Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. For our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanness, nor was it in deceit. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our heart, hearts. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak for covetousness, God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you, or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. And you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day, 
that we might not be a burden to any, any of you. We preached to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved among you who believe. As you know, how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Okay. So something wonderful that he's sharing about how they ministered um, to these believers in Thessalonica. Okay. So how they ministered to them uh, and uh, how their uh, life was, how they, how they, um, you know, uh, lived in uh, with them, um, etc. So, uh, so he is, uh, you know, he's really giving a lot of details about the kind of ministry. And this is something that, uh, that we can learn from, okay, that we can apply in our own lives as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's good that we can, you know, kind of see um, and, uh, uh, and, and notice and apply in our own lives. Right. Okay. So let's, uh, let's look at, um, uh, what he says here okay so he says uh, you know uh, our coming to you was not in vain okay our coming to you was not in vain it's not futile it's not uh, it's not a waste okay but even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated in philippi so he's referring to the prison that they were they were imprisoned and they were put in philippi for uh, in in the prison in philippi for you know delivering that uh, the girl who was uh, uh, who had was possessed with a spirit of divination, right? So they were put in prison for that, and of course something wonderful happened in the prison as well. Uh, but they they were uh, persecuted physically; they were hit, you know, whipped, and um, and their feet were put in stock, etc. So he's referring to that. He said even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated in Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. So even if they, after that, they come to this region, right, in Macedonia, and then they come to Thessalonica. So it was after that whole prison experience. And uh, yeah, maybe that, that the wounds would not have, not yet have been healed, right? Probably they would, they would have still been, um, you know, feeling that pain every time they were, you know, changing their clothes or, you know, washing, they would, they would be feeling that pain. Uh, and because they were uh, they were whipped so many times, and uh, uh, it, it's it's marked here, and then their feet were put in stock, and so on. So a lot of physical discomfort they had gone through. So um, so it says even even despite all that, we were bold in our God to speak, and right? we were to speak to you um, the gospel in much conflict. Okay, so something that we understand, we learn again that. Um, you know, just like how the people received the word in much affliction, right? how they, um, the, the gospel which came to them, they received it in much affliction, but in the joy of the Holy Spirit. Same way we see here, Paul and the team ministering the gospel in much affliction. You know, there was much conflict, uh, but they ministered. And how did they minister? They ministered boldly. Okay, They proclaimed the truth boldly. So there was no compromise uh, just because of the conflict if it was the truth it was the truth and they spoke the truth saying this is the gospel that jesus is the way the truth and the life right there is salvation in the name of jesus and there is uh, he is the one true god and uh, there is no other messiah he is the messiah right? that is what like because he he had he'd gone to the synagogue and he was reasoning right so from the old testament old testament scriptures he would have presented all this, all these facts, the prophecies that were about the Messiah. So, um, so the, it it was in much conflict, but yet um, there was uh, no compromise of the truth. Says uh, verse three says the exhortation that they brought did not come from. You no, know, he mentions three things: right, error, uncleanness, deceit. Okay, that's verse three. The exhortation, right? The uh, the exhortation that they, the message that they brought, the exhortation that they brought, uh, which means uh, it you know it's comfort or uh, um, consolation through the message. Right now, that message, the message of 
it could have been the message of encouragement you know and uh, persuasive um, sharing of the gospel now it did not come in these ways okay so it was not of error it was not from uncleanness and it was not in deceit okay so he's, he's saying you know it it was not to lead anyone astray right it was not in deceit it was not in uncleanness right it, it was not leading them to uncleanness it and it was also not from a place of uncleanness which means that they were living pure lives right? they were living um, you know, righteous lives before god so it was not from there's the source of that you know it was not from uh it was not from that place of um uncleanness it was not from a place of error it was not from a place of deceit okay? it was not to get anything out of them right it, it, that is what we he goes on to say you know later also um so it was it was not to lead them away but to lead them to god it was not the methods which were used um the the way that they shared right the lives that they lived everything was you know it was it was not from a place of error it was not from a place of uncleanness nor was it a place of deceit okay um so he says as we have been approved by god to be entrusted with the gospel even so we speak and god has given them the message god has given them the ministry and uh, given them the ministry of reconciliation to share the gospel so even as they had received it from god so they spoke um not pleasing men but pleasing god okay so when it comes to pleasing men or pleasing people well you would like to speak what they would like to hear right you would not want to say something which uh, which would upset them right you would not want to if if it was a you know a people pleasing message or a ple- people pleasing mentality this is how it would be right you would not want to want to make them feel bad you would not want them to be upset you would not want them to you know um so the message that you bring would be compromised because you want to please the people so there would be maybe the truth would be compromised right maybe because um truth being the way it is it is about right and wrong right it's black and white so when you present the truth there are well there are people who are bound to get hurt right but but you you see he comes from a place of righteousness he comes from a place of truth he comes from a place of um, uh, you know uh, living a morally upright life it's not from error deceit or uncleanness therefore it says you know we do not want to please men we do not want to please people but please god who tests our hearts and not as pleasing men but god who tests our hearts for neither at any time did we use flattering words okay what are flattering words you know flattery is when you want to when you say something that people want to hear something good about people right something nice about people which need not be the truth okay which is not the truth so you say something about them which is not the truth and why is it because you want to please them or you want them you want something from them right so you you say that so that is flattery so he's saying not as um, we did not use flattering words as you know nor a cloak for covetousness the way we ministered we did not want to get something out we did not covet you know uh, we did not say anything as a cloak as something which is covered for covetousness right uh, getting something out of them so we did not do that but 
you know, it says we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, who tests our hearts. It means our motives, God tests our hearts to see if our motives are pure. You know, while we minister and uh, in ministry, while we minister to the people, God tests our heart, tests our motives um, to see that if it's if it's true, if it's right, if it's in the right place. Um, so you see, he says, you know, God is witness. God is witness to all this. Um, verse five, neither, uh, sorry, verse six, nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. So saying, neither did we seek any glory from men. We did not seek approval. We did not seek their, uh, you know, the seek uh, recognition. We did not seek the glory from men. Okay. While we might have made demands as apostles. So what, what was he saying? You know, and as ministers of God, as apostles of Christ, as those who are sent, you know, we could have we could have made demands because you had believed in the gospel, and we could say, you know, we could have made demands. And he's going to explain, you know, how they lived. They did not even take money from them. While it was, uh, while it 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 would have been, it would not have been wrong to ask the people to support their work. It would not have been wrong. But he said we did not, we did not do that. Okay, he says. But we were gentle among you, verse 7, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. You know, just like, you know, the picture is about a mother taking care of her children, the mother who feeds her children, a nursing mother. So it's like a newborn child, right? And uh, probably just within six months of age, you know, like how the mother would care, how the mother would take care, uh, because the child... Uh, is help helpless uh, the child is uh, uh, you know is, is not capable of taking care so um, so so Paul says that you know this is how we took care of you this is how we uh, we took care just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children and uh, it's so he just goes on to say this is how we lived this is how we ministered Okay, and the word used there, uh, cherish, which means uh, you know to to show much love, to not be harsh, to be gentle, to be tender. Right. So, so that is how Paul says that is how we were. Okay. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel. Okay. What it is? What does he say? Not only the gospel of God. We to you wanted to impart, but also our own lives because you had become dear to us. Okay, um, so it was not just with the task of sharing the gospel, you know, very mechanically just sharing the gospel, but we, you know, our own lives, right? Um, uh, we we actually imparted our own lives, um, the way we lived, the way we sacrificed, and and he goes on to say, you know, how they did that. Verse nine, he says, our labor and toil. You remember our labor and toil. You know, you remember the the way we worked, and uh, you remember that. So he says, um, "Yeah, just me, just put that." Sorry. Um, yeah. So you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preached to you the gospel of God. So, so they were also. You know, Paul being, um, uh, he was skilled with the tent making um, uh, ability. So he was also working and he was laboring and uh, he worked hard. So he says that, so it must have been tough, right? Uh, while he was teaching them, ministering them, probably, you know, when they were free. And at the rest of the time, he was working with this, you know, whatever, uh, abilities he had skill he had and in the, in the business um so he was doing that so he says we were laboring night and day why so that we might not be a burden for you right so they were expenses in ministry living expenses traveling expenses um and but during all that we we worked on our own that we might not be a burden to you so you see the outlook of the minister of god right so he says okay this is this could be a legitimate need uh, this is something that i could have we could have asked of you 
because this is how you know it's laid out in scripture but but we did not because we did not want you want to be a burden to you okay um so you are witnesses and god also how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behave uh, ourselves among you right saying how devoutly justly and blamelessly okay so he uses three three words uh, devoutly justly blamelessly okay so uh, devoutly meaning that they were pious they were uh, they saw the devotion that they had the devotion f- for god obviously right and then he says we we were also you know in a in a just manner meaning um doing what is right doing what is proper okay so this is what how we did, how this is how we live and the third one she says is blamelessly okay this is how we behaved we were blameless there's no cause for pointing out and saying this person uh has made this mistake okay so above reproach blameless okay so this is how we lived this is how our behavior was so you know as ministers of god as people of god this is again for us to learn or justly uh, devoutly justly blamelessly now, this is how they ministered and so should we you know the same and as you know how he exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children okay so this is something that they did to the believers so how they exhorted which means encouraged right coming alongside comforted they consoled them and they charged every one of them so what does that mean charged literally it means um, to to give evidence right to testify to give witness so you know this is what we did right to be we witnessed we we charged every one of you as a father does his own children and the, the and the reason being that you would walk worthy of god who calls you into his own kingdom and glory that you would walk worthy of god okay um so this is how he wanted him to live okay verse 13 for this reason we also thank god without ceasing because when you received the word of god which you heard from us you welcomed it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of god which also effectively works in you who believe for you brethren became imitators of the churches of god which are in judea in christ jesus for you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen just as they did from the judeans who killed both the lord jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they do not please god and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the gentiles that they may be saved so as always to fill up the measure of their sins uh, but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost but we brethren having been taken away from you for a short time in presence not in heart endeavored more eagerly to see you see your face with great desire therefore we wanted to come to you even i paul time and again but satan hindered us for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing is it not even you in the presence of our lord jesus christ at his coming for you are our glory and joy okay so um verse 12 onwards is saying you know we thank god without ceasing when we receive uh, because when you receive the word you received it not as from men right you received the word whatever we shared you received it as it is in truth it is the word of god so that is how you received it you know which means that you received it with which with much respect you esteemed that message right you esteemed the word of god and uh, you received it right with much honor and respect and he says you know in verse 13 the word of god which effectively works in you who believe right i think we would have heard this a lot shared on it so the word of god effectively works in us and it works in us when we believe right and the word effectively again 
meaning that uh, uh, it's it's a, it's a supernatural work in a gayo. It's a powerful work, uh, supernatural work, and an effective work. And that happens when we believe the word of God, because it is the word of, not, not of man, but of God. So he talks about how the persecution happened and how uh, their own countrymen, you know, uh, just like how the others in the region were also being persecuted, they were also being persecuted and they became examples uh, to all of them. Okay. Um, so he also refers to how the Jews, how they persecuted the Lord and how they killed the Lord and, um, and, and saying that, you know, they are filling up the measure of wrath sins but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost they are they are awaiting judgment right so they are doing all this then they're awaiting judgment and he's saying that uh, we wanted to come to you but satan hindered us and and you know very very clearly he mentions in verse 19 that you know what is our hope or joy or crown it is you in the presence of the lord when he comes our joy and our hope in ministry and our crown you know it's like uh, the crown is like you know when you're talking about accomplishment and achievements you know, what is it it is your you being there in the presence of the lord when he comes right? so that is that is what that is all that matters so he's saying for you are our glory and joy okay okay so that's how uh, he ends chapter two fine okay we'll take a break and we'll come back in uh, in 10 minutes